You're with Newsmakers on the panel, Martin Van Bainen, Ruth Dyson and Tracy Chambers. The future of our electoral system will be put to a referendum at the next election. It will be stage one and voters will be asked if MMP should be retained and if not, what system would they like it replaced with? Uh, however, of course, if there is to be any change at all, it won't be happening until 2017. Uh, set your watches now. Um, are you smitten with MMP or hungry for change? Martin. I like MMP, yes, and um, mainly, mainly because of the fact that uh, every vote counts at least. What worries me, what worries me about it is, is the fact that we um, allow people like Winston Peters to, to get in. I think we need a system which keeps New Zealand first out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but... but uh, I mean, I think I'm, I'm sure it can be tweaked. I'm sure it can be better. I'm sure that the um, that five percent limit can be changed. Um, but no, I'm I'm a I'm a supporter of MMP. Where do you stand, Tracy? I have to say, I don't have a firm view on it because you go around and you say to people, "Did you vote for MMP?" and no. nobody admits to having voted for MMP. But I do like what it's made political parties do in terms of working together um, mm. better than I think we've seen in the past. The concern I have with it is why it's going to take six million dollars to advertise and promote it. And I work in that industry and there are far better ways of using that six million dollars. I think you could do it for a million bucks maximum mm. and the five million we could put straight into the health sector. Exactly, a bit more home help, yeah, mm. absolutely. Um, one bugbear a lot of people do seem to have with MMP is that there is that you know, flea on the tail that wags the dog syndrome. Yeah, yeah. Probably a classic example at the moment is ACC, and ACT have arguably punched way above their weight, forcing Nationals' hand. Does MMP give piddle-assed parties far too much power? Well, I think we saw that between 1996 and 1999, and National and New Zealand First were really punished for that behaviour. Uh, I think we learnt a big lesson out of that in the way that we dealt with other parties, but also the smaller parties recognised that they shouldn't use more than their voting strength gives them entitlement to use. Mm. So I think the public of New Zealand actually gave political parties a really big message in 1999. I, I was not a supporter of MMP when it was first introduced. I think I was wrong. I, I would now strongly vote for MMP, but I think there's some alterations we should make to it. Yeah. I don't think it's fair, um, despite um, Martin's comment about New Zealand First, I don't think it's fair that New Zealand First got far more votes than ACT, but they have no members of parliament in, and ACT's got five. I do think it's healthy for our de democracy to have a wide range of parties in parliament. Sure. Coming back to your point about questioning the 5% threshold, ideally, where would you lift it to? 10? 15 per cent? Uh, well, that's a difficult one, Mike. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe, maybe there are other ways of dealing with that issue. Mm. Um, and, and, and a threshold is, is, might not be the best tool. But um, It's the all or nothing nature of the yeah. threshold that I think is problematic. Yes. Yeah. One other point that I am keen to get your thoughts on very quickly. Um, if we really do want to change the system, could this not be expedited somewhat by holding the referendum next year during the local body elections as a postal referendum? Would that make sense, just to speed up this process? The question I have to ask is what is the percentage of New Zealanders that actually care? I would far rather that we looked at encouraging New Zealanders, particularly our younger New Zealanders, to actually be more involved in politics, understand what happens in Parliament yeah. and vote. Yeah. So to me, the system's almost secondary to, as New Zealanders, taking a responsibility and actually having your vote. If people who haven't vo people who haven't voted, in my opinion, have absolutely no right to have an opinion on anything. If you can't get your butt out of your house, mm. down to a voting poll and have a vote, then you've given up your right. Mm. And so we, we have such low percentages of people voting. How on earth are you going to get a decent reflection of MMP views apart from people who feel really strongly or really um, feel very strongly against it? Yeah. All right. Um, well, despite his ministerial responsibilities, is Dr Sharples a compulsive free spirit? Uh, does he struggle to stick with the script and keep his colleagues in the loop? It's been revealed this week that thousands of dollars were spent on jetting the nation's gang leaders to a come together with Peter Sharples and the powwow has raised eyebrows. Now, this powwow took place in February, apparently, but you guys have been going nuts about this. Why so? 
Well, it wasn't the fact that he was talking to gang leaders, it was the fact that he spent a lot of taxpayers' money, your money, on flying them in from all over the country mm. in, in food and accommodation. That's not normal practice, actually. If you want to have a meeting with someone, and, and if you're going to meet with gang leaders, you'd say you've got a leadership role to carry out in stopping the pea trade, you've got to stop the use of violence uh, within your families, whatever the issues are, they're big ones. Drugs and violence in gangs in New Zealand. Uh, we didn't hear that message. Aside from the financial concerns, Martin, uh, do you think there was anything meaningful to be gained from this encounter? Well, I guess um, the catchphrase is quiet diplomacy, isn't it? And, um, and I think there's, there is an argument that you, you should at least keep talking to to um, gang leaders and, and, and similar interests, just to see what they're thinking and keep them um, keep them talking. I mean, Muldoon was was uh, spent a lot of money on gangs, and uh, I don't think he he got a lot of flack. Uh, he had a very close relationship with um, I think Black Power and Wellington, and they yeah. went to his funeral and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I mean, there's there's quite a strong precedent for all this. Uh, the fact that um, Peter Sharple spent some money on uh, getting gang leaders together and buying them cups of tea and that sort of thing, well, g given, given the wastage in, in government, I, think, I don't think that really is such a big issue. I think that the, the, what, from my reading of it is there was quite a lot of chat about methamphetamines mm. and um, people like Dennis O'Reilly were there who's, got a very, you know, who's trying to um, mm. push a very strong mm. uh, message to gangs that they should... They should stay out of uh, stay out of pee. Um, I'm not sure about the other drugs, but uh, but that said, that seems to have been you know behind the whole powwow. Do you think there is something incongruous though when you've got your hard hitting ministers like Judith Collins saying we will crush gangs and organised crime, and then you've got the Minister of Māori Affairs um, having a come together? I probably sit on Judith's side. Um, when I was a reporter, I covered gangs round New Zealand and I have no qualms about saying they are the scum of the earth. And I don't care about their family upbringing, the damage and the, um, the chaos that they cause, they do need to be crushed. Now, if, getting them to, if spending $6,000 and getting them together means that we might be a step in the right direction, great. But for one of the very few times, I agree with Michael Laws. No ban, no um, patches. Uh, when they go to court, if, as soon as they're known as a gang member, their, um, their sentences should be doubled. They should be all sent in, to an island and they can shoot each other and leave the rest of us alone. I have absolutely no tolerance for gangs whatsoever. How's that for a bit That's firmer? Fairly unequivocal, yeah. <laughs> yes. She said we were being tamed, so I thought, well, there you go. <laughs> well, there we go. Um, coming up very shortly, we'll have a look at some other issues, including uh, this idea of biffing bunnies and wire, should it be given the toss, and other matters. Do stay with us.